Hello everybody, it's Miss Clampett here and I'm going to talk to you today along with Mrs Buckley about Behaviour for Learning at Horizon International School. Thank you so much for joining me today um, and watching our webinar. At Horizon International School, we very much focus our behaviour management strategies um, on a positive and an, on a positive approach. We understand and we, we very much believe that positive relationships here underpin creating those conditions or that culture um, where our students feel valued, they feel safe and they free, feel like they are free to learn and to make mistakes. We try to use acknowledgement of their behaviours when they are demonstrating good behaviours and they are making the correct choices. We find that that's a very powerful tool in motivating other students to behave in a similar manner. When children are recognised for their positive behaviours, there's that feel-good factor. We catch them being good and they feel good about themselves and their behaviour. We recognise that that is very important. Here at Horizon International School, we ensure that we use positive language when we are talking to our children about their behaviour and we're praising the good choices that they're making. And we always make sure we recognise the behaviour and not the individual students. So for example, we might tell a child we like the way that they shared something or we like the way that they lined up. We focus on their behaviours. And finally, Nonverbal communication is so important and um, obviously it's a little bit trickier now wearing masks but children can still tell when you give them a smile um, or a thumbs up and um, it goes a long way in ensuring that our children know that they are being celebrated for the choices that they're making in terms of their behaviour. I'm going to talk to you now a little bit about um, how our behaviour management approach works in years one and two, which is key stage one. Again, we use positive reinforcement and praise and we use the visuals. We use the visuals of a sun, so the children start on the sun each day and then the rainbows represent the good choices that the children make. And rainbows, we, we use R for rewards to describe the first rainbow was R1, the second rainbow was R2, etc. So the higher up the rainbows the children get, and um, the greater their reward as such. Likewise, if our children are making the wrong choices, they may be moved on to the clouds. The clouds represent the consequences. And um, again, they range from C1 up to C3 or C4, depending upon the year group. When it comes to um, recognising when children make the correct choices, we might deem it necessary or deem it appropriate to give them verbal praise to start with. Again, that's where the thumbs up might come in or a smile if we're particularly pleased with either the effort that a child is making or potentially they might be showing one of our, our values and, and they might be being kind to another student. Following that, we will then move them along the rainbows accordingly if we feel that they are consistently showing those good choices and that positive behaviour. If a child doesn't make the right choices, if they end up on the second cloud, on C2, they may be given some reflection time so that they have a few minutes to, to think about their behaviour, to think about their choices, reflect on those and hopefully move forward so that they end up coming off the cloud itself. If a child moves from C2 onto C3, if they continue to make the wrong choices, they may be given a little bit longer to reflect on the behaviour that they have shown um, and you as parents might be informed of this behaviour um, and also a member of the senior leadership team might have a word with the child just to remind them of, of the good choices that they should be making. So in Key Stage 1, our Awards and Consequences system is um, displayed using the pictures on the, on the screen that you can see now, the rainbows, the sun and the clouds. In Key Stage 2, it's a little bit different. We have things called Rewards Ladders and Consequences Ladders. 
Similar to the rainbows in the key stage one, so it very much builds upon what the children are used to when they're in key stage one, um, our ladders range from verbal praise up to R4. And as you can see on there, children can build if they're consistent with their effort or their behaviour, and um, they can build on that and they can end up with um, R3 or R4 and being celebrated by a member of the senior leadership team. In Key Stage 2, we use house points, so our children are in house teams, and we use house points which are inputted onto ISAMs so then at the end of a half term or a term, those house points can be tallied up. So if a child ends up in an R2, that means that they will receive two house points for their team at the end of the day. As I said, um, those house points are all tallied up on ISAMs so that they can be tracked. And we also, in Key Stage 2, have bronze, silver, gold, platinum and principal certificates, which I will explain a little bit later on in the webinar in terms of how many house points children need to get for each of those certificates. Similarly, we have a consequences ladder in Key Stage 2. Um, if a child is making the wrong choices, then they may receive a verbal warning, which is just reminding them of the expectations in terms of their behaviour for learning or their effort or their general behaviour. If we deem it um, appropriate, if they're, they're not making the right choices again, or maybe they, they show behaviours that we deem to warrant a C1 or a C2, children may end up going straight to this point. We do aim to give them a warning first, a verbal warning, so that nothing is recorded. Um, but if they continue to make the wrong choices, based on those choices and based on the severity of the behaviour, um, children could end up being moved to C1 or C4. If a child repeatedly ends up having C2s, parents will be spoken to and that may well be recorded onto our ISAM system, just so we have a record, because there may be a reason why that child is displaying behaviours that are concerning us. If a child makes the wrong choices and ends up on C3, they will have some reflection time at break time or lunch time, and parents will be informed of the C3 that has been issued. If a child ends up on C4, there will be a meeting involving myself or the progress leader um, just to discuss the behaviour that has been displayed or the persistent nature of behaviour that has led to a C4. Anything beyond that, and we're really fortunate here at Horizon International School um, that we don't get to this stage um, very often or at all, but any higher level behavioural incidents can, do, can lead to some sort of internal suspension or isolation, um, which would be um, discussed with parents um, and Mr. Quinn or Mr. Gale. So as I said, consequences from C3 onwards or a repetitive C2 um, pattern of behaviours will be recorded onto ISAMs. Okay, as we're focusing on the positives, there's lots of ways we try to recognise and reward our children's efforts and behaviours. Um, verbal praise, we use that consistently. Um, we like to use stickers as well to celebrate children. And there's nothing we love more than seeing children and celebrating their, their work so that they can show us what they're proud of. Um, so they may be celebrated by another teacher or a progress leader or indeed, as I say, they may come to myself or Mr Quinn or Mrs Buckley. Every week we have standing out. This is given to children who have stood out for whatever reason um, and that is celebrated um, in the weekly newsletter that goes out. Those children are recognised and they receive a certificate for standing out. Every Thursday we have the best version of me which is celebrated by Mr Gale and these children are invited to the assembly hall to explain to Mr Gale why they have been chosen out of all the children in their class to be the best version of me that week, what they've done to really push themselves forward and be the best version of themselves. Now, as I mentioned a little earlier, um, we in Key Stage 2, we issue 
bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and principal awards um, in, in key stage two. Uh, the bronze certificate is issued by the class teacher, the silver by the progress leader, the gold certificate is issued by myself, platinum by Mr. Quinn, and the principal award, which we only gave a few out last year of these, um, is issued by Mr. Gale. So only a few children in the school will receive that. Um, and each term, there is um, a reward for the winning house team. Um, last year, before we had to unfortunately close in March, there was a movie afternoon with popcorn for the winning house team um, just before the winter break last year. So I hope I have explained what we have in the classrooms in terms of recognising children's um, good choices and rewarding them, but also explain to you as parents what we do in terms of dealing with consequences if children make the wrong choices. I'm now going to hand over to Mrs Buckley, who's going to talk to you a little bit about our school values and our anti-bullying policy at Horizon International School. Hi everyone, it's Mrs Buckley here. I'm going to talk to you now about our Horizon values and the different things that we try to do to encourage that positive behaviour from the outset. So it's not just a system of rewards and consequences, we also are actively trying to teach children all of the time um, about desired traits, characteristics and behaviours. We just find that this really helps to have a positive culture and a positive ethos at the school. Um, and, and it helps to frame the language for the children. So, for example, we have a value of the month um, and that's discussed in assemblies and all of the values link to things that we want from the from the children and they're celebrated as well. Um, which really makes the children want to behave in a certain way. It underpins our philosophy of everyone counts, everyone contributes and everyone succeeds. It links with the moral education programme, which is statutory in the UAE. So we, we actually explicitly teach, you know, the morals and how to be a good person in those moral education lessons. But then there is also the thread that runs through everything we do day in, day out, where the values are celebrated. So we have different values each month. Um, I won't read them to you because they are on the screen, but as you can see, these are things that are all really, really positive and things that we want to instill in our children at Horizon. We also recognise when children have been doing this really well because we think that this is you know, they love getting awards and teaching them to basically be a good person and rewarding them for that is something that we strongly believe in. So we have our value of the month award winners um, at the end of each month. So, for example, for January, our value has been positivity. So the class teacher would decide who in the class would deserve um, an award for being really, really positive. That would be celebrated, you know, and then children see that their classmates are getting awards and it just raises the profile of the values and therefore, you know, really compounds and encourages that behaviour. We also have um, a challenge each month where the uh, principal, Mr Gale, sets a, um, a task that they would like the class to do linked to the value. So we're really looking forward. You can see that next month, as we move into February, our value is kindness. So we'll be celebrating kindness across the school. Um, and the children really, really enjoy talking about the values. And if you, you know, if you walk past any child in the corridor and ask them what the value of the month is, they will know and they will know that it's, it's a positive thing to embody that value. OK, now, obviously, at Horizon, we have a zero tolerance policy to bullying. Um, bullying is defined as an ongoing and deliberate misuse of power in relationships through repeated verbal, physical and or social behaviour that intends to cause harm. Now, this is just one definition of bullying. If you do a Google search, you will find many, many different 
slightly differing definitions of bullying but this is sort of the one that that we go with as a school and you know it is that that intention to cause harm that is key and it is the word repeated that is key so you know we are very very lucky at this school to have the wonderful kids that we have because we very rarely have incidents of genuine bullying um you know because it's about it's about the curriculum that underpins everything as well so by teaching the values teaching things such as kindness respect diversity really does almost prevent situations where we have bullying obviously we do have um situations where children might say things without thinking um but we you know we use that as a learning point and that's where the class teacher would would talk to the children about you know making sure that the things that we say are kind um we are becoming increasingly mindful of ensuring e-safety and cyberbullying. Um, just, just a reminder to be really clear on what your children are doing online. Um, unfortunately, across the world, you know, cyberbullying is probably happening more than in-person bullying. So, um, you know, just being aware of things that are going on on social media. As I said, we we teach anti-bullying throughout the year through our conversations with children. We do bring it to the forefront for key events such as Pro Kindness Week um, and Anti-Bullying Week because you know that just raises the profile and it, it just provides a reminder. And the children really enjoy those theme weeks as well. Another thing that we have. Um, with children is teaching them that vocabulary because what we get quite often is a child might come and say oh they're bullying me or they might tell their their parents like oh i'm being bullied but actually it is quite normal to ch for children to fall out with their friends obviously if it is a genuine incident of bullying we would take that very seriously but nine times out of ten it's perfectly normal for kids to test the boundaries with each other you know to to have falling outs with friends um people that you know they do genuinely care about they test the boundaries which is why you know we might have falling fallouts um amongst friendship groups so it's just having that conversation and empowering children to talk up and speak about their feelings is really really important as well we also when there is an incident of bullying or even just a fallout with friends we do try and apply a restorative justice approach so of course if if somebody has done something that has meaningfully and in you know intended to hurt somebody else then there would be consequences but we always try and use the approach of explaining things to children and, and encouraging children to explain how things made them feel um because it's really really important that they are also taught the skills to avoid conflict for themselves and to to resolve that as well um you know, depending on the age of the child independently or with the support of a, a trusted member of staff. OK, just something um, for parents here, you know, there's some things that. That you can do at home to try and support with your child fostering positive relationships with other children so that when they do um, come and speak to you, if they do have concerns about school, it's not abnormal for you to be talking to them about it. So we always say to try and make talking to your child about school a habit. I know often when you're in the car home and you say, oh, what have you been doing today? They'll say, oh, nothing because they've had a really tiring day and, you know, they can't be bothered to talk about it or explain it to you. But it's about perhaps making those questions more specific for them. So, you know, what what was your favourite lesson today or um Talk to me about something you've really enjoyed, uh, because that will just narrow down the questions a little bit and get them talking. I think it's important as well as parents to familiarise yourself with who their friends are um, and and to have that conversation that because they do fall out, that it is normal to fall out and making up is, is a really important part of 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 life and of any relationship. 
I think as well, just another reminder of being aware of what your child's doing online and their use of social media, being as open as possible. And I know, you know, as parents, you worry about whether your child's got enough friends and are they happy at school and having those conversations will really help to to draw that out of them. And if you have ever got any concerns, please do speak to your child's class teacher. Um, because, you know, our philosophy is that the most important thing at school is that the children come in happy and leave happy. Which brings me on to my next thing, just just as a, and like I've said, it's extremely rare that we have any cases of bullying at Horizon, but just to, to give you the warning signs so that you are aware, there are some things that would potentially be a red flag to parents. You know, for example, if the child's saying that they don't want to come to school or they seem scared to come to school, or if they feel that they don't have any friends, they seem sad, they're having trouble sleeping, um, if they've got any psychosomatic symptoms. So if they're explaining, complaining, sorry, of um, a stomach ache or feeling sick when you know probably they're not really feeling sick and don't really have a stomach ache, um, or if they appear anxious or to have low self-esteem. Now, a lot of those are things that, as as children grow and develop they have these ups and downs just like we all do and some days they might be a little bit more moody or a little bit more sad and we have children all the time saying that they don't you know they don't feel like they've got any friends but when you unpick it that's not actually the case um however what i would say is if you see you know two or three of these things happening and they're happening regularly and you do feel worried about your child we are always happy to, to talk to you and to meet with you about any concerns because like I said the most important thing is that your child is happy coming to school okay that is it from us we want to say thank you for listening if you have any questions or queries please do let us know and we hope you enjoyed our webinar